Hi, this is E. David Crawford, Editor-in-Chief of Grand Rounds of Neurology. Joining me is Dr. Brian Halpan from uh, Chicago, and uh, he's been a regular contributor here to Grand Rounds of Neurology. He's going to discuss with us a, a very timely subject, and that is uh, germline testing and men undergoing active surveillance. Brian, thanks for joining us today. Thank you much uh, for having me, Dr. Crawford, and uh, always happy to talk about uh, the importance of germline testing for men in prostate cancer, and more recently, in active surveillance. And so um, genetic testing itself uh, is somewhat confusing to most urologists. And again, if we're going to use genetic testing, and specifically that within uh, the realm of active surveillance, our purpose is, is to identify gene mutations that predispose to aggressive disease. And although we've heard a lot about mutations that increase uh, or are responsive uh, to certain medications, including PARP inhibitors, not all of those mutations will actually predispose to aggressive disease. So in order to establish relevant gene mutations that would be important to understand or identify for men considering active surveillance, we have to first identify a panel of genes that are specifically increase the risk of more aggressive or higher grade disease. And this is one of many studies uh, that evaluated a panel of DNA uh, repair mutations among, among men who underwent surgery. And this particular uh, study uh, included about 1,700 men with prostate cancer who underwent surgery at Johns Hopkins, and all pathology was evaluated by a single pathologist. All uh, men were sequenced for 13 genes, uh, including many DNA repair genes. And we ultimately compared those uh, gene mutations with the ultimate uh, final surgical pathology. And we specifically looked at men who had low grade cancer and compared them to men who had high grade, grade group four or five disease. And as you can see here, the summary shows that men who had either an ATM, BRCA2, or MSH2 mutation uh, had increased risk of having not only higher grade disease, but specifically grade group five cancer, even compared to grade group four, which argues that these gene mutations not only predispose to higher grade disease, but actually the most uh, aggressive type of disease we know saying that they potentially have worse biology underlying it. Now, in this, we should also consider one gene uh, not shown here is also CHECK2. If we're going to use these genes uh, for, um, I, again, identifying men for prostate cancer, we also want to verify that many of these gene mutations also predispose to an outcome such as lethal prostate cancer. And again, our group, as well as in collaboration with Hopkins, demonstrated that men with either BRCA1, BRCA2, ATM mutations had a increased propensity uh, to die from prostate cancer specifically compared to men without these mutations. And in, uh, although not shown on the slide, these uh, men typically died at an earlier age compared to men without those mutations. So taking this all together is that men who have either BRCA1, BRCA2, ATM, CHECK2, or potentially MSH2 mutation have more aggressive cancer and are more likely to die from the disease. And when we specifically look um, in their performance in active surveillance, we see not surprisingly that these men don't fare as well. Meaning if we look at men uh, in either a Hopkins or a North Shore University uh, active surveillance protocol, we see that men who have germline mutations for either ATM, BRCA1 or BRCA2 had an increased rate of being recategorized to higher grade cancer over time. And again, men with these mutations seem to fail or be recategorized at earlier time points compared to those. These graphs in particular demonstrate that men with any of these mutations um, had not only when they were recategorized, they were significantly more likely to be recategorized into grade group three or higher, which again supports that they predispose to uh, higher grade or more aggressive cancer. Um, but when you look at BRCA2 specifically, um, there was almost a five-fold higher rate of being upgraded or recategorized to grade group three or higher. So based on this taken together is that men who have these type of mutations 
are not ideal for active surveillance. And as such, caution should be strongly advised to patients for considering active surveillance if you have these mutations. Based on this, we do recommend uh, considering a gen uh, genetic um, or genomic ana genetic analysis uh, for men who are considering active, enrolling in active surveillance. Thank you. Brian, thank you very much for that uh, very succinct uh, overview. So quick question, uh, and I think you addressed it already. So your feeling is, is that in general, even though the detection rate is probably 5% or less, that all men on active surveillance should undergo germline testing? Correct. Thanks. All right. Uh, we appreciate your time, and uh, thank you for sharing this information with our grand rounds in your audience.